Hello ATG people and welcome to another Tech Talk. Today's subject is Revit for Electrical. My name is Jay Ayala and we're going to be talking about panels, circuits, specifically with lighting and power, and uh, most importantly, how to quickly document this and make this very productive for you. Alright, so let's dive, let's dive right in. Here I've got a floor plan in Revit and we are looking at a conference room. In this conference room, uh, as you can see, this in this other area, everything's wired up and it's already circuited. You can see that we've got uh, the lighting here on on panel LP1-3. This other one, this other conference room, conference room one, room number B118, it doesn't have anything circuited yet. So how do we do that? Well, first of all, we have to have a panel that we're going to go work with. Here you can see that I've got an, a lighting panel. And I even have, for example, the panel schedule. Okay. And here you can see that I've got the panel schedule. I've got phase A, B, and C. I've got the assignments already created. Now, I didn't have to type any of this in. Okay, That's done for me automatically. And I'm going to show you how this whole process starts. All right, so starting from scratch, if you're working on laying out your devices and your lighting fixtures and things like your, uh, your duplex receptacles, one of the things you may not know with Revit for electrical is that we can actually add a lighting panel that's smart. All of the circuitry information on that panel can be added directly there. So here's how we start. So from the systems tab, we'll go to the electrical and we can add electrical equipment. Okay. And in here, we're going to look at the 480 volt lighting and power uh, lighting power panel. And based on how we have set this up, this, this particular panel it needs a surface uh, wall hosting, so we can place that right there, okay? Next, once it's placed, we can go ahead and select it, and we can look at the properties based off of what we're looking at here. And specifically, I'm looking for the panel name. I'll just go ahead and continue clicking further down the list here until I get to the panel name, and I'll fill that in. As you can see here, it's not filled in. I'll just put, um, in keeping with the naming convention there, LP-2. That panel is now named. I can do the same for that power panel, but let's document this, right? The whole thing about this is that it's supposed to be easy documentation. So what I just did is I added a, a tag based on its category, okay? And because this tag is reading the panel name, it automatically brings that in. I don't have to type it in again, okay? Next, what we'll do is we will add all the lighting in conference room one, along with the corresponding storage rooms, to panel LP-2, okay? Let's take a look at how we can do that. I'll start by selecting that light, okay? That's it, Just select the light. Once that light is selected, you're going to see in the modify slash lighting fixtures contextual ribbon, the, the one that's colored green over here, we can see that we can create a system, and here's a power system. So once we create this power system, um, we've got this other uh, contextual ribbon that helps us um, edit the circuit and also select the panel. Uh, panel from the list, or I can simply choose LP2 here, or I can simply go click on the panel that I want to add, okay? Now I can see that I can edit this circuit, and notice that the only item that's on this circuit is the only two rather, is the panel itself, LP2, as well as the light. Well, I wanna add these other ones, so I can simply select them. And if you're in a large area like this, you can go and select a large window area and select all of them. Okay, so now that I've got the circuit kind of designed and, and ready, I can simply finish this, okay? And it might look like nothing has happened, but watch this, if I simply hover my mouse over that lighting fixture, I can see and hit the tab button on my keyboard, I can easily see the relation of all of the items and where you can kind of even see where the, the routing would be for wiring. And it's pointing towards that panel LP2, okay? So if I go look at panel LP2 now, here's the electrical panel schedule information. I'll just choose the default in, uh, template and you can see that it already filled itself in Circuit number one, lighting, conference room one, B118. So where did that information come from? Well, that came from when I selected that first item, it happened to be in conference room one, B118, and the category, this happens to be lighting. So when we look at that particular, uh, that particular panel 
um, schedule here, it's picking up the information from the room for free. And the thing about this is the architects are already doing that. They're already typing in the names of the rooms and the numbers of the rooms. You're getting that information for free if you're using Revit, right? So let's leverage that information. So as you can see, we can, and I've got this panel LP1. It's a little bit more mature. It's got some more circuits in there. As you can see how this works, um, it's, it's a beautiful thing. Next, what you're gonna see is we're gonna repeat this process for power, okay? And I've got this other drawing that I've set up with electrical power. It's just the outlets. Now, all these outlets, you can see they're wired up and, and circuited. Um, and we're gonna take a look at that now. So these outlets down here are not circuited yet, okay? However, these are, and I wanna show you how I know. If I simply hover over it and hit the tab button on my keyboard, I can see the interrelation of that there. Now, I just clicked the left mouse button and selected that circuit, as you can see there. Now, I've got a couple of buttons down here that pop up. Now, these buttons are very subtle. They also appear here in the contextual ribbon. I can add arced wiring just like that. I can add the arced wiring. Now, that layout may not be very efficient, so you can pull this down. And by leveraging the, uh, the vertex over here, you can kind of direct the arrow in the direction that you want it to go, okay? <clears throat> Finally, we can add the the same tag feature, the tag feature, tag by category, and that that home run is now telling me that this is circuit on power panel one, circuit number eight. So let's do that one more time. I'm gonna show you a different way to do it this time. I, I simply hover over that outlet and I click. Okay, now when I click the left mouse button, I get these two buttons down here. Earlier you saw me go to the contextual ribbon. Now I'm just gonna use this feature right here, okay? Now if those arcs aren't large enough for me, I can grab the vertex and pull them to make those arcs a little more exaggerated. And again, that that home run, it's too, it's kind of awkward being that far out. So I'll just grab the head and the vertex and align them where I think that they ought to be. Again, I can simply tag this and move that right to the end of the home run, okay? Now, you've seen what a circuit looks like and how we can add the wiring. Well, what if these outlets haven't been circuited yet? Well, this is very simple, okay? What we can do is we can simply grab any one of these, okay? And now again, in the electrical fixtures I hit the uh, <laughs> the escape button there. Okay, so you're not seeing it because it's hidden back here, but we've got another contextual ribbon called electrical circuits. I can go ahead and grab that one. Now this is um, showing me that th these items are already circuited, and I can confirm that by just hovering over and hitting the tab button, okay? So if none of these are circuited, you can simply make those circuited just like we showed in the electrical uh, lighting panel. All right, let's go back to that, uh, that electrical floor plan here. So here's the lights that we, and using the same exercise, we'll simply hit the tab button and select them and add the wiring just like that, right? And then here's the home run. It's too far, it's uh, impeding on the other items. So I'll take the head and the vertex and just kind of modify them like that. I'll add the tag. Here's the tag, and if you ever see that some of this doesn't make sense, like this switch, the switch is supposed to use is supposed to go to these two. You can simply take the wiring, for example. Oh, I just tagged it. <laughs> you can simply take the wiring and just move move it to the item that you need it to be on. Right there, we go. We've got the the switch now being wired over to that electrical light fixture. You'll see that kind of thing happen on occasion, but um, overall, oh, and I forgot to add these items to that circuit. So to modify after the fact, it's pretty simple. We can go to the electrical circuits and I can edit the circuit and then I can go add or remove additional items. As you see here, I'm adding the switches and then I'll finish it. And of course, if I hit the, the uh, hover my mouse over a lighting fixture and hit the tab button, you'll see how all of those things are related. And I've got these dashed lines showing that they are in fact uh, related to that circuit, okay? And I can add the wiring uh, yet again. 
And when I add the wiring yet again, it doesn't redo the wiring that I've, I've already modified or the, the, head, the, the home run. It just automatically does that. Okay, so um, one of the final things I want to show you, which was one of the more, most important things, and that's to document this easily. Um, I can simply go grab the lighting panel number one, for example, the one that's more mature, it has more lighting fixtures, and I can place that on my sheet. Now that lighting panel is uh, is bi-directional, right? So if I start modifying it here, or if I start modifying it in the floor plans, um, this will keep up to date. Now one quick thing that you might notice in phase A, B, and C is that this is not balanced very well, okay? So that, that might cause uh, a little bit of a problem across those three phases. So I wanna let you know that if we go open LP1, here's the panel, okay? And we can see across phase A, B, and C, these are not balanced very well, okay? And I can simply, look at this, look at this. So in Excel, you can do this, but it takes quite a while to jumble all these up. Now watch what happens to the circuits when I rebalance this. And what you're gonna see is that they, they get balanced and that they switch different locations and look at the values all the way across. That's in much better balance now, okay? So some of these circuits jumped up, some of them jumped down, some of them even switched over across to the other side of the panel and then vice versa, right? So that was done automatically for us. And if I go look at our floor plan that we were just looking at here, and that would be this guy, all of those circuits that were previously assigned have been renamed automatically. All of those uh, circuit um, circuit callouts have been renamed. I don't have to go back through into Excel and double check and make sure that this is right because all of those balanced loads, as you see here, are now uh, taking, taken into effect. So this is a very overlooked thing that I have uh, come across in my experience with Revit is um, even though electrical design firms are using Revit, they're still bringing in AutoCAD um, or rather Excel Excel files that are importing them in so that they can show their circuit panels. I'm here to tell you that you know I skipped over a lot of details, but I wanted to show you that you can in fact do that. And these panels, you can format them to match your company standards or get very close to those company standards. Um, I'm just using this stuff straight out of the box and I'm showing the functionality here. And uh, for today's tech talk, I'm hoping that this quick video gets you enticed and gets you interested in, in, in seeing more of how that can work. Uh, and if you want to learn more, please reach out. Feel free to reach out uh, to me and my team and we can definitely get you more uh, information. And if it's something that you think you might want to get uh, invest some time and get training on, we can definitely help you out with that. And again, my name is Jay Ayala. Thank you so much for joining our Tech Talk today. We'll see you on the next one.